We are back at the tomb of the prophet Nahum in the town of El Kosh. Okay, this is Nahum's tomb. This is the shrine, the tomb, everything inside. See the Hebrew writing on the wall. So Jews were the caretakers for the past 2,500 years. When they had to leave in the 1950s, when Israel became a nation again and all the Jews were kicked out of Iraq. And the Jews had been here ever since Nebuchadnezzar. He took them in the diaspora, uh, when he took them all out of Israel and brought them here to Babylon. But yeah, they all got kicked out around 1950. And they gave the key to the Christian family next door and they've had it ever since. As the caretakers. About a year ago, we were here, we visited, and we said, well, what does Nahum have to say? We were curious. So we opened up our phones and we looked at Nahum chapter one, verse one. It says, the burden against Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Elkoshate. God is jealous and the Lord avenges. The Lord avenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserves wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord has his way. And then down here at verse eight, this is where it really gets interesting. So God is angry with the enemies and what his enemies have done to his people in this region. Now this was also written about 2,500 years ago, about 100 years after Jonah went to Mosul to preach repentance. Mosul, which is ancient Nineveh, because God told Jonah, go there, they got to repent, or I'm going to destroy the city because it is super evil in 40 days. But 100 years later, Nahum writes this. God's angry again with the same, the same region. He says, but with an overflowing flood, he will make an utter end of its place, and darkness will pursue his enemies. So the Tigris River goes right through the middle of Mosul. And today... And about 30 years ago, they built the Mosul Dam, just a couple miles north of Mosul. And in that dam, the, the soil has gypsum in it. When that gypsum touches water, it dissolves and creates a water pocket. And then they get bigger and bigger and bigger until like the size of your car or a house. And there's a tunnel inside the dam and it has gauges on both sides. And when the gauges, the pressure gauges on both sides of the tunnel are the same, they know they have a water pocket somewhere inside the dam. So they drill down, they find the water pocket, water squirts everywhere, and they turn on the grout or the cement. And for 30 years, they've pumped 10 tons of grout into those water pockets, trying to fill them up. But if those water pockets ever get to the other side of the dam, then it's game over. It's gonna dissolve the dam quickly. There's a 100 foot wall of water is gonna crash over Mosul in a couple hours, in two or three days, it's gonna hit Baghdad with 16 feet of water, and then Basra. That means all of Iraq is wiped away. Erbil is safe. So last summer, uh, the former President Obama wrote a letter to Prime Minister Abadi of, of Iraq. And he said, this is critical. And your water engineers will not talk to us, but something has to be done now, or that dam is going to fail. And there has been some articles written about the dam recently saying it is the most dangerous dam in all the world. So uh, Prime Minister Abadi fired that guy, hired somebody else, and they signed a $300 million contract with this Italian engineering firm to go and fix the dam for one year. Also behind the dam and under the water, there's sinkholes where the, the earth has just been sucked away through the springs and seepage. So Nahum, they might try and fix the dam, but honestly, God in his foreknowledge knew, knew what was gonna happen with ISIS and the 3,000 slaves in Mosul and 
you know, everyone has seen what ISIS has done over the past two and a half years. But even before ISIS, the Islamic State was there, Al-Qaeda was there, and even before that, it's always been a dangerous city for Christians. But Nahum has more to say. He says, with an overflowing flood, he will make an outer end of the place and darkness will pursue his enemies. Now, if you remember that tsunami that hit Japan, that was black water that swept over those poor people. Darkness is gonna consume his enemies. What do you conspire against the Lord? He will make an utter end of it. Affliction will not rise up a second time. That makes me think he's speaking to us today because certainly affliction has risen up a second time. But he says, after this, no more. But keep looking. In verse 15, it says, Behold on the mountains the feet of him who brings good tidings, who proclaims peace. I say that's me. <laughs> Amen. In chapter 2, verse 6, he says it again. He says, The gates of the rivers are opened, and the palace is dissolved. Now that seems like damn terminology. The gates of the rivers are opened, and the place and the palaces are going to be dissolved. So... This could be the spring. This could be the time when that dam is going to break. I said, God, what are we going to do? You know, you sent Jonah there to preach repentance to these people. And, and they repented. And certainly a lot of people today would love to see Mosul wiped off the map with the Islamic State. Uh, but the heart of God, God told Jonah, he's like, Jonah, there's like 100,000 people there that don't know the right hand from the left. Can you at least have mercy on them and the animals? That's what it says in Jonah. So I'm like, okay, Lord, what can we do? I felt like you said, send a text message. So I went to the, to the cell phone company and I said, how much is it, does, is it gonna cost to send 500,000 text messages to everybody in Mosul and the Nineveh Plains? And they said, in American dollars, about $12,000 or 15 million Iraqi dinars. But they lost all the phone records and ISIS destroyed all the phone records. So I said, okay. What else could we do? There was a radio station broadcasting in, but they were afraid to broadcast the message. But God gave me a message of repentance for Mosul, and we're going to get it in one way or the other or through social media. So, but the message is this. It is, you know, Mosul, you have become a wicked city once again, just like in the days of Jonah. You even blew up Jonah's tomb. But God is calling you to repent once more. You need to ask your neighbors to forgive you. You need to return everything that was stolen because they stole everything from the surrounding villages and from the Christians. You need to ask Jesus Christ to forgive you and ask him into your heart. And if you do that, maybe you will find, you'll find salvation and forgiveness and maybe you will not be destroyed. But if you don't, Hell and destruction are coming for sure. So the word of God has to be fulfilled. So just pray with me that this message will get into Mosul and that these people will repent. And, uh, but we will see. They may not repent this time. And we're going to see something catastrophic like we've never seen ever.